Hello, hello, happy Friday everybody. Just give me a minute, I'll check that I am live this end. So I can see all those comments as they come through. And make sure it's muted so there's no back talk there. Hello, um, I'm here again. I think it's been a few weeks. Um, I did get a small request to play with the um, Open the Gate die. So I thought we'd pull that out to play with tonight. Um, I have also pulled out some other goodies as well. And um, Leslie sent me this amazing swatch for the cardstock as I can never remember all the names so we can use this to help us pick out some cardstock colours as well tonight so that's going to be fun I'm going to leave that there because the rainbow is so pretty I have decided that I am very much in a summer mood so we're going to play with the big bug hugs stamp set today It has been absolutely glorious weather. Oh, it's feeling a bit thick. Interesting. I must be getting some of the new batch. I must have had to open a new batch. Okay, so let's cut some of this down. We have, yes, yeah, so I was saying we've had glorious weather. <clears throat> In excess of 25 degrees most days, heighting up to 30. Okay, where's my mystery? Oh, I had some some cardstock in here already. Maybe we can use some of this up before we use a new piece because I don't like wastage. So yes, we've very much got lots of bees around at the moment and. The plants are being overtaken by snails. So this stamp set very much felt like it was appropriate to play with. Let's go for a ladybird on here too. And it should be very colourful. Lots of different colours. If I do it this way, I should be able to get another one on there afterwards because again I don't like wastage so let me know if you're crafting this evening or if you're watching back on YouTube I'm sorry this is a live action replay from Facebook so sometimes you may feel odd moments where I'm interacting with people on Facebook but you won't see those comments coming up on YouTube I hope you'll stick with it anyway. <laughs> so there we go. We've got a ladybird and a snail. Should at least be able to get the bee, I think, on here. Let's take these ones off. Oh, hi, Kelly. Happy Friday. You're making a bacon butty. Oh, yum. That is funny enough. Probably something I'll have tomorrow or Sunday, depending on what time the Tesco shop arrives. Because the bacon is coming on the order. <laughs> do like a bacon sandwich. Now, with a bacon sandwich, are you... What sauce do you go for? Are you ketchup or brown sauce? Or even something different. I'm very much a brown sauce person if it's available. If it's not available, I would opt for ketchup. Okay, what else have we got in here? I think we will go for one of those. That should fit on there fine. And the smaller one. I'm trying to make the most of some of this cut off. Cut off cardstock. 
It's just been too hot to use the cooker and red sauce always, says Kelly. It is hot to use the cooker. I still very much have been using, well, we still have been using the cooker anyway. Not for too long, just for, like, light things. It's funny you say that. So how do you do your bacon? How do you cook your bacon? Next question. <laughs> because... We cook ours in the oven. <laughs> Do you fry it? Do you grill it? How do you cook your bacon? <laughs> it's going to make me hungry again having this conversation. Right, let's now we've used the off cut pieces. Let's bring in this. Oops, shaking the light. Fry it, or if it's bacon, you grill it, says Kelly. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's get some of this foliage going as well. I actually might want a second large mushroom. I'm probably going to have one of those nights where I overstamp things. Um... I'm going to use die cut grass, so we'll just do, we won't use the, the grass pieces in here. Have I got any other little other than the grass? Okay, let's go for this. I should have put them on stamping blocks, really. Never mind. We can do one lot like this. I actually think, oh no, maybe not. I thought maybe I had some of these foliage things stamped up already all right we'll do that one for that and then i'm going to grab <clears throat> a stamping block to make the next bit better oh kelly is asking do you like smoked or unsmoked um smoked to be honest which is funny because i'm not really a salty like fan so i don't add salt to anything Right, I'm going to put these on the blocks now to make it easier to stamp them repetitively. Uh, yeah, I don't really add salt to anything. So it's quite funny that I like s smoked bacon. How about you, Kelly? Are you a smoked or an unsmoked? <laughs> this feels like a debate that I would have with my work colleagues. We talk about food all the time. <sighs> there are some real debates that we have over food. Okay, that should be plenty, because again, I think I'm going to almost have maybe big ideas. I'm very much, um, I like, do you like gammon? Some people say that they don't like gammon, even though they like bacon. And I'm like, how, how is that possible? <laughs> Isn't gammon just thicker bacon? My boss, talking of bacon, my boss always hates it when the bacon conversation comes up because she lives in Prague and it's not really a thing that they have over there um so she has to go like really far oh Kelly says she doesn't like gammon yeah my boss has to go really far to be able to get it in like this one shop <laughs> um and sometimes, like, the Lidl has it. So she gets really excited when it's British week <laughs> at Lidl in Prague. So now I'm intrigued. What is it about gammon that you don't like? Because it's just thicker bacon. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do, before I get into colouring, um, I want to use the wood grain texture background dye. Now, everything I'm using, or most of what I'm using tonight, is actually either in the retirement sale or on sale. So, if you've just been paid, like I have, <laughs> great time to grab a bargain from some of these products. I think this wood grain background texture dye is 30% off. So, what I would like to do... Um, is let me move that out of the way is I've got the um, just the frame this is from the clover frame dies this is a met, um, sorry imperial 
yes, imperial frame size. It's just a basic stitched frame. And you can see that this wood grain um, background drop runs this way to give the wood grain effect. But I would like to do my card this way. Now, the great thing about this die is it doesn't cut around the edge and it has a running pattern. Hi, Heather. Heather, did you get your parcel today? I think I got a shipping notification, <laughs> um, a delivery notification. So I would like to run <clears throat> the die through the machine twice. So I'm going to make sure that I have enough space on here. Can't cut it that way. Let me go this side. <laughs> I'm getting cack handed. Oh, I've lost my scissors. That'll be the husband taking them into the kitchen. And I forgot to check whether they were back. So I need to make sure that I've got quite a long piece so that I can run this through the machine a couple of times without going too wonky. I should have brought in the guillotine, but I don't have one that's long enough. So I'm going to hope that we will get that in okay yeah perfect all right so i'm going to run it through the first time heather what time is it for you because i know that you're in i'm not even going to try and pronounce it <laughs> all right let me bring in the big plates so obviously I'm going to need to run this through twice. Oops, I've got too many plates here. Hang on. Kelly, you'll be proud of me. I've, I got out my new plate. <laughs> it's only been about three months. Um, I'm still going to use the old one because I've only got the new one out for very intricate dies because it is my last, <laughs> last plate. <laughs> <clears throat> okay so I've run that through once and now you can see I've got my texture coming in oops and now I'm going to attempt to line it up so that we get almost like we might have a bit of an overlap but that's okay I'm okay with that we can cover up overlaps with with embellishments and things like that. Okay, let me run this one through, bear with me. That one is a bit stiffer in my cuddle bug. Kelly says, oh, I'm bad. I bought new plates last year and I'm still using the old ones. Yeah, well, I told you mine were trapped in a cupboard, right? <laughs> so I finally got into that cupboard and had a good old clear out. Right, I'm just going to move that to the side. So now you can see I've got a whole run of the pattern so that I can do my card this way. So now I'm going to run through the frame die. What did I do with that piece of memo tape? Because, again, I don't like to waste it. And actually, I'll still have some of this left that I will save for another project. Okay, let me just run that through. And then I can get rid of these cutting plates. Because they're so clunky. I hope that cut through. There we go. Nice little arm workout on a Friday night as well. Are you after your bacon, Sani Kelly? Are you crafting tonight? Okay. Oops. Should have probably used the new plate. So now I've got a beautiful wood grain texture running the other way. So <clears throat> let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Does anyone have any exciting plans for the weekend? I might go shopping tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> when I say shopping, it'll probably be online shopping. 
Okay, so we've now, let me get all this out of the way because I also need to cut the, um, the open the gate. Kelly, you asked for inspiration on this one. So let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so you can, if you've got brown cardstock, you can cut this from brown cardstock. However, I don't. So I'm going to ink mine up. Let me cut this down. Now, the other thing you'll notice with this die is you've only got the fence this side. So you may want to cut extra of just that piece. You can go over the door a little bit and then trim it down to give you extra pieces. So we will do that. Let me cut the, the whole thing first. So let's bring in the... I still didn't get out the new cutting plate for this though, so let's see if this works. I think that's more accessible though. Let's bring in our Heffy Doodle mini die cutting machine. Oops, I've gone a bit wonky there. Maybe should have used the... A new piece, I think this piece may be losing its stick. Oh, excuse the crack. So, should have put it through at an angle. Uh, yeah, I need a new plate. Hang on. He says, I thought I had a new plate. That could be anywhere. Let me run it through the big machine, though. Actually, I could probably run it through twice. Let me put it through at an angle this time. Oops. I don't want to have to get me big plates out again. It's all clunky. It's because this is... um <laughs> need a new one. I thought I had it to hand, but clearly not. Let's see if we can just run it through again. That's a good idea. Thanks. Oh, it slipped a little bit, but that's okay. No, I am going to run it through. See, my motto is just cardstock. Don't worry about it. I'm going to put it through the big machine because I don't know where those plates are. And let's get some new memo tape. <laughs> I do love the Heffy Doodle dies for that. I do think you get a lot for your money. And she tries to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm knocking the camera. Um, she does try to make things affordable. Also stretching your supplies at the same time. There we go. There we go. Should have just gone for the big one in the first place. Let me get rid of those little pieces in between. So there's the this. You do have a very light texture in here. Um, if you wanted to run it through a couple of times, it would imprint that more for you. Um, but I'm not going to because we've got the wood grain texture in the background. So I'm going to cut two more of the fence. Machines do, I find, work best at an angle. Well, especially the cuttle bug. Oops. I thought I nearly broke it the other day. I was like I trying to put something through it and it was just so stiff. I don't know why. Okay, let's get rid of those bits. Yeah. So I'm just going to snip that down and I think I need one more. Will I get it on here? Yeah. I will, because I don't like wasting cardstock. <laughs> okay. And I shall probably take three months to find the new plate for the Heavy Doodle one. Oops. I've got a little bit... That's got a little bit stuck on there. 
Should have used the new plate for this one too. Let me just snip that out. Whoops. And there we go. Right, let me get all this out of the way. I really do hate it. <laughs> and then we'll get some colouring done before, and I'll die cut those little pieces out as we're putting it together. Kelly says tomorrow and Sunday I'll be hiding. It's meant to hit 30 degrees Celsius again. Yes, we are having some rather warm weather. Which is putting me in the summery mood. I, I am quite enjoying the warm weather. The dog, not so much. But I am. Am I starting to look tanned on the camera? No, the camera's making me look white. But I promise I am starting to get tan. Which is unusual for me. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> let's do some colouring so that I'm not boring you with just die cutting. Let's bring back in our little cuties. So let's start with the B. And we'll go for some warm greys I think because I do like my warm greys I'm going to start with a W7 just think that they're nicer and they're less harsh than the cool greys so then that'll be yellow or orange or oh talking of bees while I'm colouring this up so that's W7 this is W5 Last night I was sat on the sofa just watching the telly, you know, as you do, and um, I caught my dog like sniffing around and my carpet is pretty much black. It's got like, um, how do you keep your nails? <laughs> Beautiful recovery. We'll come back to that after my little story. <laughs> um, and I thought she was like, you know, saving me from a spider or something. She was proper sniffing around her nose on the carpet. And anyway, I was like, no, something's not right. And um, so now I'm going down to W3 from W5. And I got a closer look. It was one like a little worker bee. Um, so, you know, obviously you get like different. I think it's like a honeybee. I think you'd probably call it. Um, just so lucky she didn't get stung. I don't, she's, she's pretty good. She won't try and eat eat these things and well she does but she then spits them out so like if there's a moth or something or a fly that she catches she'll like just like spit it back out again so i'm so lucky she didn't get stung by this bee like just crot no idea how it got in so i've just gone down to w1 to blend out all that color <coughs> and now onto the nails it's funny because um this one's only just starting to grow back. I broke this one on a live a couple of a few weeks ago. So I'm going to go for some um, yellows now. So um, the the premises of it is Heather. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. I I I know they say for strong nails. Um, so this is uh, Y19. Sorry, that you should have like a lot of calcium, so like milk and cheese and yogurts and. I hate milk, <laughs> to be fair. I have it in my coffee. Um, I'm going to go down to Y13. I have it in my coffee. And when I have cereal, um, I have it on my cereal, but I don't eat, like, drink it or eat it, if that makes sense. So it's there as, like, the soaker, <laughs> soaker for, for the cereal. And then the rest gets pulled down the sink. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that was um, Y19 to Y15 to, no, I went to Y13, sorry, and then to Y11. I'm just going to put some Y19 back in. What colour are bees' wings? I feel like they're more black, but I'm actually going to go for the uh, orange because, you know, there's no rules in card making. And I think it will just be a bit brighter. So Y19 on there to the Y13 just to pull it out. And then Y11, which is really light, just to take away that whiteness. And then just back to the Y19 to pull a little bit of orangeness back in it. Oh, so bright and beautiful. So I'm going to go for the same warm greys for the ladybug. Um, so yeah, everyone always comments on my nails. So I've got W7 here. 
funny because we had that conversation yeah a few a few well, that's a few lives ago now i think kelly you were here i went in one of my drawers under the under the cabinet now ladybugs are they red with black spots or black with red Spots. Why, have my, why has my brain suddenly gone blank? I'll finish the face first. So that was W9 to W5. They're black with... No, they're red with black spots, right? Yeah, I'm sure the spots are black. <laughs> it's been a, a hell of a week. <laughs> oh, thank you. Heather's saying when hers are a certain length, they break. So I've gone um, down to W3 here. Yes, it is annoying when one breaks. I, I try to make sure that I sort of at least cut them down a little bit, like this one's starting to get a bit dodgy. I can sort of start to feel when they get a bit flimsy. flimsy. Um, and this is W1. Uh, red with black. Thank you. <laughs> Faces are black. Well, that's a good start, Kelly, because I didn't read that before I started colouring the face. So let's just... Um, Put some darker spots in then. And the, oops, the ladybugs will probably work really well with some white gel pen highlights actually. And on the, actually all of these will probably work really well. So that's W7 down to W5. Quite a big jump actually. But these are quite inky, these markers. So W3, I'm barely doing these ones at the top. I'm just dotting them and keeping them darker. Oh, I do love these cute bugs. And then W1, just to pull out all that colour. So now I've got to pick a red, which I always struggle with. I want it to be quite bright. So let's go R29. I'm going to go for maybe quite a basic blend. R29. Did everyone see earlier the sneak peek that Leslie put up on Instagram? There's a little um, video or reel or something of her doing some sketching. So that's exciting. It might be looking like we might be getting a new release. And, you know, I could use some new goodies to buy. That's R29. I'm going to go to R27. Because I am definitely at full capacity on Heavy Doodle products. Could use some new things. So I'm excited. I want to say, <clears throat> and I'm, I need to go back and rewatch it properly because my dog was distracting me. Um, I'm going to go down to R24 and then we'll come back in with some of those darker colours to darken up some of the shade. Oops, I've gone into the black there, but that's okay. Um, I want to say it might have been a fox or a dog. Either way, I'm in. <laughs> so I'm going to come back in with R29 and darken up some of the shadow here. What colour should we do our snail? I don't know. I'm going to colour the leaves while I have a think about that. And mushrooms come in all sorts of colours too, right? Um, let's go for a G17. Oh, I thought my husband had taken the dog in the garden and I was starting to get worried because he hadn't come back indoors. And he's actually done his back in, so getting up and down this hour from our first floor flat is not easy for him right now, bless him. And he done it in just taking his shoes off on Sunday night, would you believe? Like, literally something so simple. And he's managed to do his back in <clears throat> and had the week off work because of it been to the doctors and everything but i've just heard my dog whine from the other room which must mean they didn't go outside so he's taken her into the bedroom so at least i can stop worrying that he's fallen over outside <sighs> the dog gives him away <clears throat> i 
Okay, so this is G17. I'm just putting in some strokes, really. Because as you know me, I'm quite basic with my colouring. I don't get too fancy. I'm going to come down to G14 and literally just go over that colour. And I think... Mm, I'm going to have to try and use the other end. It's a bit... I think this one either needs a refill. I wouldn't normally recommend using the chunky end. It's a bit harder to... But I need the colour for the blend, so we're working with it. Didn't realise. I have to add this to my list. I um, My birthday's coming up, and I think I'm going to ask for vouchers to the store in the UK that does the copic markers and the refills i've got a few that could use refilling but it's not cheap those that use copics actually i've seen that some people actually just like don't bother with the refills and just buy another pen like that feels like it might not be the best um Best way to go because <clears throat> the refills at least would do more than one refill right I don't know how many it does okay so that's G14 my very dry G14 and then we'll go down to the G12 my birthday is on the 6th of August so a few weeks away yet but with the rate that this year feels like it's going it's going to come around very, very quickly. <laughs> so this is just the G12. I'm just taking away from that white that I've let not gone over with the other colours. And I will leave this like this, you know, quite natural look almost. I'm loving the garden at the moment. It's so green and... All the different colours are coming up. It's very pretty and very relaxing to sit in as well. Oops, I think I missed this one down here. Okay. Anyone got any ideas on this snail? We can go funky. I'm going to go for the mushrooms. I am thinking maybe like an orangey color we could go with like y this is yr16 and we can do these all different colors i just want to make it pop i want to make it look really bright and fun oh, i think this one might need a refill as well i feel like this is getting a bit dry <sighs> So that's YR16. I should really clean these two. Let's go down to YR14. Should be a bit more inky to pull it out. Yeah. I think this is quite a new pen. I do love getting new markers. I think I'll be gutted the day that I finish the collection and not have that excitement of having the new markers arriving in the um, post. <laughs> Oh, yours is the July 29th, says Hannah Heather, um, Heather sorry, for your birthday. Oh, not too far apart at all. It's the 6th of August, mine. Uh, let's go back to the YR16, just to add in some darker colour again. And I think I'll do the small one the same. Should be a little bit easier. Quick blend. Um, so that's YR16 to the YR14, keeping this very like watercolour-like colouring now, just getting it in there, almost doing like circles. And then I'll just come back in with the YR16. And then, I'm not sure on the dots in yet, I'm very much someone who jumps around with my colouring. <laughs> um, so... Heather said, or someone said, uh, uh, no, Kelly said, sorry, maybe a brown shell. Need to open the window and put a fan on. That sounds like a good idea, but I get flying moths. 
Oh, Heather's trying Olo. I have over 12 markers. Yeah. I've also noticed that the newer batches seem to, um, seem to, the lid seem to crack a bit more, which is not fun. I'm thinking maybe like a mahogany brown. So let's, oh, oh sunburnt orangey brown. So let's go E09, E07 and E04 and see how it comes out. If we don't like it, we can always restamp it, I guess. So this is E09. We can always go for a really funky colour for the, I want to say slug bit. I don't know if that's the right word. But this isn't too dark, this blend, so it might be all right. We'll put actually more like dot detail in it just to blend everything out. So I'm not going to worry too much about my strokes here. Um, I'm actually going to make this more solid as well. Yeah, I think all of us stop counting when we get to a certain age. <laughs> I don't really look forward to my birthday, to be honest. But I always get hassled for, what do you want? And I'm always like, I don't know. And the site where we, where our pens come from, I, I presume you can get them in more than one place, but this is the most like reputable site, I believe, and usually has quite good offers on sometimes. They've just updated their website in the last year. They never used to actually do gift cards. Otherwise, I probably would have asked for them before. So that's E09. I'm going to go into E07. Just bring out some of that colour. Might want to come back in with the darker marker again. And then E04. It always find a weird colour on its own, but it works so well in blends. I actually use it for skin tone as well, which I think I've shared before. Okay, so let's come back in with E09. Just put back in where we want the darker colour to actually sit the most. Uh, let's put some up here. Oops, I've gone outside the line. <sighs> that's okay. Okay, I don't know how much that's actually picking up on the camera. And then I'll come back into E07 as well. <sighs> Concentration. Right, let's go for... We've got reds, we've got oranges, we've got yellows... I am thinking, I don't want to go too much more crazy, so I'll probably actually go for another orangey-yellow sort of colour. So let's go for Y30, <coughs> sorry, I'll have to get a drink in a minute, Y38, this is like an orangey colour. Let's go this side. That's Y38, and then I'm going to come into y, um, yeah, Y18, which is a yellow. Oh, it might be a bit bright, but that's okay. We can come back in with the orange. I actually, I quite like it too. So that's the Y18, and then I'm just going to bring in the Y11, which is the one I had out anyway. It might pull it out a little bit. I was going to put some dot work in the um, the shell, actually, to make it sort of a bit more interesting. So let's come in with the, oops, the E09. And I'm literally, maybe shouldn't have used such a small piece of paper. There's me trying to use up my cardstock, making it harder on myself. So I'm just putting in some dotting. I think it just adds some really fun texture to characters that you maybe are finding a bit um, needing to stand out a bit more because these have all got their dots and things on them. 
Kelly, I feel like you've just sent me your heat. Like, I feel like my... <laughs> just suddenly gone up a notch on the hot level. So I'm then going to come in with the E07 and just extend on that dotting. I don't know if the camera's picking this up. But it does add something to that shell there. There we go. I don't know if it can if you can pick up on that dotting in there but I really think it lifts that right let's um then also tie in the um ladybird a bit so let's do this mushroom red so this is the R29 yeah I feel like my 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 living room which is also my work and craft space has just like gone up to 40 degrees or something R29 and then this is the R27 at least it's not the height of the day R27 and then into the R24 and then I'll just bring in the R29 again to add some darker depth back into it and then I'll probably do all the I think it's the lids I absolutely love, love Copic I probably will go back how are the Olos holding up so let's use the way um, the Y the warm greys again to do the dotting we'll just keep that in the same keeping so this is the Y7 I'm going to put a little line down that side of the mushroom. I'm just going to do them all at the same time, keep the same colour in my hand. I've heard good things about the Olo markers too. I'm just not sure they're so readily, easily available here for us to try at the moment. I don't know, Kelly, you're also in the UK. You, you do a lot of... Um, research online about where products can come from <laughs> so that's the y7 maybe you can let me know if there's somewhere in the uk selling them because shipping um heather you'll have to let me know i hope you didn't get any um like custom charges or anything on that parcel because when we get things from america but I, from what i understand is it's not the same the other way so this is w5 but if we get things from america or Canada that is over I want to say over 35 pounds um, we get horrendous custom fees and it can almost cost as much to um, pay the custom fees as what the if not more than what the product actually was sometimes so Sometimes we have to step back and go, it's not worth it, unfortunately. So that's the W5. You have to change your colouring. Uh, W3. Yeah, I found that with this when I came to Copic Markers, though, from um, Spectrum Noir. Very much had to change the way I coloured. because everything is so different which yeah i struggled with the illustrators i found those the spectrum art illustrators i found those really inky and i found them really hard to control the the flow of how it went onto the cardstock so that's the w3 and then into the w1 Now I think he did take her outside. I hope he's okay. <laughs> she has a habit of chasing foxes or wanting to chase foxes. Very much going almost like a watercolour colouring tonight. I'm just... But I still think it's going to look really fun. Yay, we're all coloured up. I just hope I don't need anything else. Right, let me throw some of these markers away. So that I have some space to do the next thing. Hopefully, she says, I won't need any more. Oh, yeah, 
yeah, no worries. I just hope you didn't get any fees. Oh, so good, you got it without any fees. That's good. Because <laughs> I was worried. I did put a low value on it, hoping. Um, I think a couple of extra things may have found their way into that as well, since the photo I took you. <laughs> yeah. And then I sent a ton of um, cards, you know. I'm sure we're all in the same boat. We make them and have nowhere to send them most of the time. So I sent a ton to a work colleague who is doing a fundraiser. I think she's going to add like little bundles to her raffle. <laughs> and now I have some space in my craft room. They are so adorable, aren't they? They're so sweet. Right, let's have a look now then back at our card. I wanted to... So we're going to have the gate. This side. Oops. So we are going to need an extra some extra fence pieces so let's snip this down like that you can either snip it there or like straight up um it depends where you're putting it i think depending on where you want to cut it down so we need that one and we are going to need the third one so i have left a little bit of an overlap so that um I can stick that on top and make it look like a continuous fence. So this is perfect. And I will snip it close to the gate bit again and we can always snip off the excess afterwards. Okay, so I, I've obviously done this as like just for, for texture in the background. And then we're going to need some grass. I didn't decide on the sentiment, but most of the sentiments are quite long and thin anyway. Oops. All a bit stuck. Okay, so I've put my frame die away. So we're going to want some maybe like layered grass here. So we could go for this one. Oops. Should have got these off the packet. And then we could go for like another layer. And then the gate could even sit over this one. Now, do we want it as an interactive gate? Or we could just put it flat. I think interactive is more fun. Yep, so let's get the frame out again. So this is the frame that I've used to cut out my background. So we can make sure that we've got the grass cut at the right size. And let's use my little cardstock swatch. Hi, Roberta. Hello, hello. So I have um, this Heffy Doodle card colour swatch. Um, to make it easier for myself for the grass, we're going to pick some greens. And I can ink up the greens. I have all of these, so we can pick any of them. So we've got green bean. Winter green, I think, is going to be a bit dark versus what I've coloured. Or we've got kiwi crush. I think I'm going to go for the green bean. Because this one's quite nice to ink up. So let's have a look for that. That one, I think it's okay. So, I actually have some smaller pieces here which will work perfectly for what we're doing. Let's take those out, let's put this aside for a moment. So as I'm not going to need the whole panel, it actually doesn't matter that this doesn't cover the whole thing because we're going to cut it down for the grass anyway. So I'm going to run this one through the die cutting machine quickly. That piece has lost its stickiness. They are very yummy cardstocks, aren't they? I know, I feel like I should just have it sat here <laughs> so you can see the rainbow of colours for a minute. <laughs> I do love my Heffy Doodle cardstock. Okay. 
bring in these clunky plates again. We've still got pieces here from the gate. Oops. I love coloured cardstock for die cutting and making things easier. Okay, so this is going to be the first piece. Um, and I'm going to cut this down. Oh, got it stuck to the plate. I'm now going to cut this piece down with this smaller grass piece. I'm going to go quite short because I want to layer it up so this first piece can be this small. They have just come back in from being outside and my dog is panting so I think she's been chasing foxes. <sighs> so this is going to be, sorry, getting quite a lot of stuff in the way here. Yeah. So this is going to be this piece. Now, um, if I'd cut the whole panel already, I could have just, I should have done it. If I'd cut the whole thing, I could have turned it round, but never mind. Here we go again. Double this. Get it cut out first. Oops. Oh, Heather has to start dinner. No worries. Enjoy. Should have told us what you're having before you left. <laughs> and Kelly's back. Do love a good food chat. <laughs> like I said, it seems to be all we talk about at work. And it starts some debates, and it but they're funny debates. It has me in stitches. Right, so now I want to decide. So I'm just going to line that up here. And I'm going to use that to help me decide where I would like the next piece cut. And what I love about this is it has got a bit of an overhang. So you can you know, decide on your placement of the grass blades first. So I'm going to go about there. Just hold that in place and tape that down for a moment. And I'll just get that cut out. Actually, might not even need to ink them up to be honest they may be all right just as they are okay let's get some of this out of the way again lots of off cuts now okay so that's going to line up like that and like that and that's perfect because when we bring in the fence that's going to sit quite high anyway, so I'm going to ink up some like sky and stuff. I think I'll just keep it quite basic, you know, like a blue sky. I just wanted the background for some extra texture. Let's get this out of the way again. There's me saying I didn't think I'd need to bring it back in, and I did. Now I can't remember how these, these sit in here. Maybe, no, not that way. I can't remember. Should have just got a magnet sheet out. Never mind. We can always get extra grass as well. I think actually I might ink them up. Let me just move this out of the way. I may want that again. I don't want to lose anything. So I'm going to first actually, because I think the front piece is getting a bit lost. So let's go for a forest moss. It's a bit darker, but I'm actually going to use that on the background as well. Ooh. So let's get this inked up a little bit so that we don't lose the front panel. Is anyone else's grass at the moment in this heat just going brown? <laughs> Maybe that's what I should have done. <laughs> just brown ink. 
going to blend it up. I want to leave the tops of the blades quite light. Should hopefully help. It's all right if it's not perfect at the bottom because that's being covered up. Hopefully just help this front bit. Yeah, stand out a bit more. That's perfect. So I'm actually also going to ink up on, am I? Yes, I am. <laughs> now, it looks quite dark here, because it is, but that's fine. Oh, I'm about to lose my green clip again. Now, this bottom bit is going to be covered up. I might want to take that off in a minute. But I just want to get like a, a light greeny sort of colour coming up at the top. So I'm going dark at the bottom and I'm not worried about these blotchy areas because it's going to be covered up anyway. But it's better to drag it up from the bottom and get lighter as you go up if you're going to cover up areas like that. Proper arm workout in this heat. You can definitely feel me heating up now. So let's just bring in our blades of grass and line them up and check. So it looks quite browny there, that's also okay. That's fine. Just a different colour. Right, so now I'm going to bring in a brow for the gate. So I've got this here. We'll just. I don't think the green is going to interfere with it too much, so it's fine. Oopsie daisy. Again, you can use brown cardstock for this if you want to. You can now see that also that stitch, the wood grain stitch, is a bit more profound. But like I said earlier, <clears throat> if you want it to be more visible on white cardstock because you're planning a white fence, for instance... Oh, this is frayed burlap that I'm using, by the way. Um, you can totally run it through the machine a couple of times and it should imprint that fence look for you more. So I want to give it quite a, a rustic look, I guess. So there we go, we've got that one. Oh, this is shifted up. There we go. There we go. And then we've got our two extra pieces here as well for the other side. I remember as a kid, um, my mum was always out in the garden in the summer painting the fence with like the oil stuff to, to keep it um, maintained. <laughs> So these fence bits don't, <clears throat> these fence posts don't have the wood on them. It's just the gate. But if you wanted to make it look like a complete wooden fence, you could actually use this wood ground, wood grain texture background to put it into these pieces if you really wanted to. You could totally do that. So I just need to get some sky colour. So that's going to go there and there. It's looking really good already and we haven't even got the bugs on it yet so let me get a wipe because we definitely don't want to get this green into the sky and I am gonna have to grab a drink in a minute <laughs> before my voice completely goes but like this week has just been a week of calls at work like literally back to back it's been insane okay Bear with me for a moment. Try and do it without choking on it. I need to dry this before I put the cardstock back on. Because, as we know, the inks are water reactive. I'm actually using my distress inks, guys. Are you, are you, I'm impressed with myself because I do tend to use a lot of Kathleen Puma at the moment. Okay. 
Okay, let's go. Mm. I think that might be a bit bright. I don't want that one. Hang on. I don't know where it's gone. Oh no, I don't want that one either. We may have to just deal with the brightness. Okay. Let me find a blue, oops, a blue ink brush. Your gate is so pretty. Oh, thank you, Roberta. All right, let's start with this one. It's already got some ink on it. I have no idea what color it is. I'm gonna try not to add anything to it and keep it light. It could possibly be the Mermaid Lagoon, which is what I pulled out anyway. But if I don't add any ink to the brush and just use what's on here, it should be a bit lighter. And then I'm gonna come in with a darker blue just around the edges at the top. I'm just going over that green a little bit, but most of that's gonna be covered up. Um, I need this dark blue brush and it might no we haven't got ink on this one so this is blue print sketch mixing them up now I just want to darken up the edge in I think this brush could use a clean don't want to get it on that I actually might put some ink on that green green bean cardstock that we were using. Just this front one. Maybe like a mowed lawn. Just because I feel like everything else now is inked. And that is the only thing that isn't. <laughs> it might stick out a little bit now. If I'd thought about it, I could have used the darker cardstock for the back grain. But never mind. We are where we are now. And I just love the fact that that edging is a bit more darker. You can come down, I might actually come down a bit more at the top there. It's a bit, a bit light still at the top. I still want to keep it bright, but I just want to add some extra interest. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that now happy with that so that's blueprint sketch let's just clean this up again okay. and then I think we've inked oh no I just said didn't I I wanted to put some some green on that front panel because it feels odd now that it's the only one, that grass blade at the front, it's the only one that's got no ink on it. I think it stands out now, a bit like a sore thumb. So let's get a lighter green. I'm literally going to pull, oh, yeah, I'm going to pull this out. What have we got on here? Something. And you might not feel like you see much. But it is taking away the the harshness of just the coloured cardstock. And using coloured cardstock just makes it easier to blend. The reason I used white for my background is because um, I wanted to do the two-tone. And if you try and ink blend a different colour onto a cardstock, it's funny. There we go. I feel like that doesn't now. So this is the green bean that I've used. I don't know if you can now tell, it's just a tiny bit darker than before. So now it doesn't stand out so badly like a sore thumb. Okay, let me clean this again. Oops, hello, this is why I don't have my windows open. Go away please, bug. I, sh I want to shut it, but I also don't want to shut it. My window's literally just to the right here but if i shut it i think i'll melt even more um, 
I'm under like three lights as well, otherwise you wouldn't see me. <laughs> so that's not helping. And now I know how Leslie felt in her hot summer nights in her old craft room. I think she's got lovely air con now. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to throw those brushes out the way. Oops. Did I just knock that really badly? Sorry about that. Reposition that for a moment. Yeah, I did knock it. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so we're gonna have this here. Oh, fingernails. This is gonna go here. Gate's gonna go here. We're gonna have the sentiment along the top. I'll have to do that on a strip. I will cut these pieces last because I feel like I'd lose them if I cut them now. And then we've got our cute creatures. So, don't know why I keep bringing that one back in. We need to die cut these. Oops, nearly lost my plates. Yes, it is, Kelly. Issue with having gardens, trees, bushes, moths, yeah. Our garden is a shared garden. I haven't got like a door or anything. I live in a first floor flat. I think that'd be pretty dangerous <laughs> to have a door. Okay, so let's get these adorable cute bugs cut out. This one is a set that is retiring, sadly. So if you haven't got it yet and you like the look of it, do go and grab it before it retires i checked before the live it was all still in stock before the live and there wasn't yet like the red stock warning so i think for now you are pretty safe but don't leave it too long <laughs> okay i do not know where these are going to yet be placed i'm just going to pop them down and get them die cut out for now wonder maybe we can find a birthday sentiment. I think I've got a couple of birthdays coming up that we could make this for. I say that. I am really hopeless at getting cards in the post. Like, seriously. I make them and then, yeah. Ah, that bug heard you say bug and disappeared. Yes, right. <laughs> no she'll put me on that card <laughs> she'll glue me down <laughs> um where's the bee oh there it is i'm just being blind just being blind so last year we saw these like really crazy wasp looking things uh, and they were like huge uh, but they look like wasps, but like ginormous wasps. <laughs> and I think when we Googled them, they were called something like hornets or something. But, and I don't think they're harmful, but they're quite scary. When uh, we walked past this bush and there was like loads of them. And um, yeah, like I said, it's just, they look scary, but I don't think they're harmful. So let's get the mushrooms cut out. And you know me, I can only cut one thing at a time. Otherwise, we're going to have a disaster on our hands. And I'd really rather not have to colour anything if I can help it. <laughs> so, um, our lovely Amanda um, Stevens is on, and um, I hope it's tonight, I'm sure it's tonight, is on Craft Roulette tonight. I cannot wait to watch the replay tomorrow. Sorry, Amanda, I cannot stay up that late. <laughs> I would actually attempt it like I did for Leslie, but it has been a really long week. <laughs> but if you don't know what Craft Roulette is, it is a show hosted on YouTube every Friday night. I don't know the exact timings of, um, do you know what, for this fence, I'm actually thinking that the gate can be in front, but these fence bits 
I'm thinking about sitting behind this blade of grass. I wanted that blade of grass so that whenever you open it, you can still see. But I think that actually works really well to be in front like that. Um, so yeah, Craft Roulette is a show where um, it spins for parameters and you have to make your card from the parameters. It's so much fun. And um, I've just actually given up two design teams. So I'm hoping to have way more time to play along more and come and play along. I need to get to my first zero hero milestone. <laughs> Oh, need to catch up here. Kelly says, I think bumblebees are struggling with the heat. I saw five on the floor, not moving. And hornets kill bees. Oh, really? Ooh. There you go. Roberta's giving you the time. 6.10 CST for the slideshow and 6.30 p.m. CST for the live show. Which makes it about... We're five hours ahead. So, yeah. It's about half twelve, I think, for us. Right, new piece of memo tape. I think that one almost shifted on me. I think I have used it a lot. And now we need to cut these out. Don't know how many we're actually going to need. I'm going to cut out just a few. I know I coloured a lot, but the way it's starting to come together already, I think... I think... Here we go. I think the snail, the more I look at it, the snail should go behind here. Now we can either have him peeking out and just glue it down or we can have it interactive and actually like sit him right behind the fence here and leave it so you have to open it to see him. Or we can just have him like poking out and just glue that down and then we could move... We maybe would want him poking out a bit more than that if you were going to do that. If I'd really thought about it, we could have done a slightly interactive... Ta-da! It's too late for that. Hi, Amanda. Did you hear your ears burning? We were just talking about you. You're on Craft Roulette tonight. <laughs> That's so funny. Did I actually cut this? I did cut this out. Welcome, welcome. Nice to have you with us. So let's do... Again, I'm just getting an idea of the land at the moment. We're not sure whether we're going to use all this or not. Oh, dog made me jump. She just come around my feet. Let's also go for some smaller ones, I think. They might um, work better than that bigger one. There's the smaller there it is. I'm really blind tonight. Right under my nose, these things. You like him hidden until you open the gate. Okay, good plan. I can then maybe stick some of these um, things to the... Um, oh no, that wouldn't work. Oh, maybe. We'll think. We'll think about it. So I was saying, Amanda, I don't know when you joined... <laughs> oh, Roberta says craft roulette's in two hours. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'll be having a hot chocolate and we'll be going to bed by then. I think, yeah, I think these smaller ones work a bit better. I'm going to tuck that there. And then let's do this one. I really do adore this set. It gives me full-on summer vibes. It really does. Still haven't decided on the sentiment, but and we need to... Um, find like a card strip or something to put that on I guess I'm really trying not to um, use my memo tape I'm going to regret that in a minute I think <laughs> okay I'm just wondering if this piece is a bit too big I'm going to tuck it in start sticking things down in a minute oh. Move this forward. Just need to make sure that the gate was still open, which it won't with that, will it? No, it won't. We need to sit that a little bit further over, I think. 
yeah like that I think maybe a couple more maybe I did need them all in the end let's go for a couple of the big ones oh it's getting really warm Roberta says, hi Amanda, still die cutting from my camp classes. Oh, what camp classes are these? Do do tell. What have I missed? Is this a virtual event, an in-person event? Actually, Amanda, I have a, um, a post to share tomorrow. I'm going to have a scrapbook layout page with a one, one of your single lights. It was really fun to put together. Okay, it's just tucked one behind there. So I've got, I've got four. I definitely feel like I need a fifth. You know me. I like odd, odd numbers randomly because I don't like odd numbers in most areas of my life except when I'm card making. So we're going to go with it. Oh, Concord and Ninth Virtual Camp. Have you done that before, Roberta? I always see people have lots of fun with that one. Okay. I think this will be the last one. Just maybe something like that. Just to make the ladybird pop at the bottom, we can put those away for another project. Okay, I think we're almost ready to start sticking things down. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, Roberta says it's the first time. Well, Roberta, I cannot wait to see what you create. And I hope you have lots of fun. They should be a good laugh, I guess. Okay, so let's bring this back in. Now I've got to remember the placement of it all. <laughs> so let's put this stuff over here. I am someone, but I can't do it right now because I'm on my phone. <laughs> I'm someone who would very much usually take a picture. <laughs> to remember where I put everything so you guys might have to shout at me so let's start with this one because we know that this one is the one that sits behind and is going to line up at the bottom let's get some double-sided sticky tape I'm still annoyed that my husband seems to have taken the other scissors which are my sticky scissors I like to call them they've got washi tape around the handle and I use those ones for sticky stuff. But I won't be too mad because I do now have my cutter bee scissors. Oh, they're all right there. So um, I used to use these ones that I'm now using for fussy cutting. But I don't need to anymore. So just excuse me, I don't want to get my head in. I just want to line that up at the bottom. Like so, and then we got this one. Do love this wood grain texture. Um, no, it might feel odd because I've coloured like a blue sort of sky on there, but I think it just adds a bit of interest to that background. And don't forget, it's thirty percent off right now because it is retiring. And it's a fabulous one. You can use it because it doesn't cut around the edge. It's, you can use it for a continuous run. Um, and I doubled mine up to be able to do it this way. Okay, so let me stick the... It's going to sit about there. And that's going to sit about there. Might want to chop it down. Oh, no, I think that works. There we go. Oh, we're a bit wonky there, though. Maybe I should stick. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to stick them down first so that I get these straight. <laughs> Clue, but 
So I think I've just picked up the wrong one. I have that one's about to get way too excited on me. <sighs> Amanda says, during craft roulette, how rude. <laughs> oh, I really wish I could stay up, but I will be watching the replay, Amanda. And I was saying earlier, um, I've given up two design teams. So I hope to be able to participate and play along with Craft Roulette a lot more. And those that didn't see, last weekend, I'm just lining this fence up with the edge of the card so that I've got it straight. And then the next one should also go down straight. Um, I did my first pre-recorded video on YouTube. I took part in a YouTube hop. I was so proud of myself. It took me a while to make the thing. <laughs> but I got there. A few learning curves in a short amount of time. But I got there. I mean, it wasn't perfect. But um, I was actually quite proud of myself. And I even made a graphic and everything with my photo. Would you believe it? I got fancy in Canva. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm super proud of myself for that one. Right, I just need to try and lift this up. Oh, she says... Can I get my nail under there just to hook it up a little bit? Yeah, just so I can make sure that this lines up so that we're making it look like a continuous fence. There we go. Perfect. And this one's going to go in front. And I think that that just overlaps and lines up nicely for that. So I'm just going to chop off the end here because we overhanged a little bit. So I'm just gonna chop that off to straighten that up. Okay. And then this one's gonna go in front. Now, I can use foam tape, but I'm actually gonna glue it down, I think, instead. Because I haven't used foam tape on this side, so I don't know, it might look a bit odd, but the key thing here is you do not want to glue the door if you want it interactive. You only want to glue the... I've done it again. I've picked up the wrong... That one's not... Oh, it was fine now because I've tipped it down. You only want to glue these fence pieces if you want to have that door interactive. Yeah, it was for Sweet November Stamps. Oh, you watched it, Kelly. Thank you. And Amanda says I'll have to go watch it. Yeah, I was... Um, it was something that was like we weren't given a huge amount of notice for. We were invited to it. And I was working all week, so I didn't really have time to do it until Friday night last week. And then it was for the Saturday. So it was a huge learning curve in 24 hours. Um, but I did it. <laughs> Like I said, super proud of myself there. Okay, so as you can see, I've only done the fence bit um, so that we've got the interactive door. So now we can hide our snail behind there. So let's get some glue on that. I just want to start getting this down. Um, we obviously need to still die cut the, the gate pieces, but I wanted to do that last because I know what I'm like. If I cut, it, cut them out earlier, I would have totally have lost them by now. Even though I've got triangle trays and things to put them in, I still would have totally lost it. Now you can't even see the grass, look. Never mind. I couldn't have had it in front anyway because um, we wouldn't have been able to have opened the gate otherwise. Okay. So that's hidden. So what did we have next? We had... The B up here, didn't we? So then the sentiment can go along there. I thought I picked up the wrong one again then. I'm really not doing well if I was. <laughs> I will appreciate any feedback on my YouTube. My first, you know, there are some lives there. I have been loading the lives from Heavy Doodler's group over there as well. But any, uh, the pre-recorded one... Um, yeah, it has the fancy, fancy graphic at the front. I think that was the thing I was most proud with. Taking a photo, removing the background <laughs> and
and attaching it to a, a YouTube thumbnail. I was just super impressed with myself there. Um, so I think I had this one. If I didn't, I think I'm going to tuck this one behind. Yeah, let's do that. Technology was not my friend at the time either. I think that made it harder. So yes, if anyone has any tips to make things easier for myself next time, I would very much appreciate it. And I think the next thing I need to learn is like voiceover because there were certainly moments that I would have loved to have sped up but the way that I had recorded it and maybe that's part of my learning curve <laughs> have you ever recorded like and then tried to speed up your live voice <laughs> you sound like a chipmunk it was digging me a giggle at midnight on Friday night last week <laughs> at that point I was like I'm gonna put this down and come back to it in the morning <laughs> Right, obviously I just want to make sure that that mushroom doesn't cover the door and is not going to interfere with the opening mechanism there. So that's why I was just being careful where I put that. Okay, so then we had... I've knocked these, haven't I? Maybe we go this way. And then... The bigger one behind it. I can't remember how I had this now, guys. Maybe something like that will work anyway. Maybe a little bit le lower. Something like that, maybe. And then the ladybug's going to go here, isn't it? Oh, we'll go for it. You know, I think it looks fine. <laughs> so Amanda says, you always do the voiceover separately after editing. Yeah, see, I didn't feel like I had time to learn how to figure all that out in such a short time. So what I planned was I did some live talking on a bit that I knew I wasn't going to need to edit. So because it was the for, for Sweet November Stamps, um, I think the main premises of it is that people were more interested in the colouring on that hop than... Um, than the full card maybe it's, I think they're more for colouring so I did the talking through while I was colouring of my image and then I was able to sort of speed up it was an interactive card as well I was really impressed with myself I think I posted it to your group actually Amanda I use film flora it's pretty easy and I do graphics and animations in Canva yeah I've, I'm using Canva I've been using Canva for a while now um, absolutely love it I did have premium at one point and then I wasn't really using all the features of it. So I downgraded, but last weekend I did upgrade again because I have, I say big plans. I have plans for my YouTube channel. So it's exciting for me. I'm very excited for my next set of crafty goals. Has anyone else set themselves crafty goals? So I haven't completely pushed down this side of the mushroom yet because I want to tuck this in just behind it there. Like that. Oh, it's so summery and pretty. So then the ladybird's going to go down here, centre stage. And again, I'm not going to completely push it down to stick it so that I can stick these leafy bits behind it. The ladybug is going to go here. And then if I'm quick, if I'm really quick, I think the fox has just gone past again. We can put, oops, this one there. Oh, she says, if I can pick it up with my nails. And 
that's the good thing about glue is it's a little bit forgiving and allows you some time to play around and put that one there okay yay oh i really 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 love how that has turned out right so for the gate pieces let's get out my lovely heffy doodle card swatch again um and i'm actually just gonna go for one of these greys so we've got oyster shell or holy mackerel and i actually think based on the fact that i've used warm greys the holy mackerel will just sit very nicely she says let's hope i've got this one um kelly says she uses in shot i think i have used that before actually um once or twice do you use that for voiceover we can zoom oh yes please amanda that'd be a mate right um holy mackerel cardstock where are you i'm sure i've got it i want to say actually amanda isn't this one of your favorite colors i want to say you like the the greys Oh, come on, I know I've got it. I've stocked up on it recently. I need a better filing system. I've got black. I don't want black. So there's the oyster shell. Oh. Well, I don't know where that's gone then. One more quick look. It could be... Told ya, there it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I literally did a restock recently and went all through my cardstock. I even posted it in the Heffy Doodle group when I was doing a restock. So I should have every colour in there. Right, I've got a little piece here. Let's get this cut out. what i would like to know is is there a um i presume you can't record directly in canva then it's not that clever <laughs> you have to record elsewhere do you and i think um i did enjoy the features that canva had to edit the video but there was a couple of things missing from it that I could do on like my desktop free version. So like on my laptop, it's got a editing suite on there, a video editor suite. And it's very, it's quite basic, but it, it does the job if, you, if you're on a budget. But I did like Canva. It just doesn't like big files, I figured. <laughs> Okay, so these are the little gate pieces that it's cut out, and I've just realised my mistake there. But, luckily, looks like it's not quite stuck down there, so that's fine. I can tuck that in behind there. And no one will ever know, unless they watch this. <laughs> and then you get this little gate piece, the, the handle there. And now it looks even cuter, right? Kelly says they add new features, but sometimes the music they offer can still be copyrighted on YouTube. Uh, yeah, good point on that, actually. So what happens with that? Do, do, when you get that warning, do you just ignore it? Or are you supposed to action something? Because I had that at the weekend and I wasn't really sure. But I thought um, the music that was yeah offered was should have been royalty free. But who knows? Right, so I've got a bit of a... I'm just going to put some glue on here because these pieces are tiny. I would get a mess if I tried to put them directly on. So let's go for this. I've just got my little cocktail stick that I like to use to help me put, put it on the right side. Just put little bits of a glue dotted on 
I have seen people use like paint brushes for these sorts of excuse me while I don't get my head in the way I want to try and get it as straight as possible sometimes I find I do things wonky because I'm looking at it from a wonky angle like that oops uh, we're all right we're all right <laughs> Oh, I'm not into making money at the moment anyway. I don't really understand it all. <laughs> don't you have to have like a certain amount of subscribers or like some sort of affiliate program to earn money from YouTube? I don't really know how it works, to be honest. <laughs> Amanda, maybe we definitely need that Zoom call. <laughs> I need all the insights, guys. I need all the, all the tips. As I enter this new stage of my crafting, <laughs> can I call it a career? <laughs> Not really a career, is it? <laughs> I could tell. Well, it is for Amanda and for Leslie. I, uh, one day maybe. I just want, there's one particular stamp set I want, that's all. Then I'll be a happy bunny. One day. Who knows? Right. So there you go. You've got your beautiful gate. Now we just need to finish off with a sentiment. And again, I'm going to grab some cardstock. Now we used green bean, but then inked it up. But I think this one's too dark. And Kiwi Crush is too bright. So I think I'm going to go green bean again. I have still got my offcuts here and I'm actually just going to stamp a sentiment on here and cut it out. So we need the misty. Put that there for a moment. And the stamp set. And I think I'm gonna go with flying by to say happy b day because then i can use it for a birthday card so let's put this in the corner see if i can get it straight does anyone ever use the grids on the misty to help them get stuff I've done it the wrong way around here, look. I want that one down. Yeah, does anyone ever use the grids to help get things straight? I have done. I think it's a fabulous idea. Let's see if my eye is... Huh? I think that's not too bad, you know? Okay, so I'm just going to use a black memento ink for this I shifted my little matlet there we go Oops. Amanda says she uses the grid this might not be straight now that I've um, that map might not have been straight <laughs> never mind I'm going to stamp it a couple of times to make it really stand out I think the grid is great for like the alphabets and things when you're wanting to make your own sentiment, you know, to make that line up easier for you. Oh God, catch up on the comments. It's okay, I tend to re-edit and change the music. Oh, just unmuted myself by accident. You need a thousand followers plus four thousand hours of watch time within the last year to monetize and start making penny. Oh, okay, so I won't worry about it for now then. <laughs> that, 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 thanks for that. <laughs> I won't have to worry about it then too much. I did have a Google of what it meant, and apparently they, the only there's there's two types of copyright messages that you might get, and the one I got was did say that I didn't really have to take any action, so that's fine. 
I am very much not in it for the money necessarily. Anyway, it's just something new and fun for me to learn at my own pace with no pressure. That's what I like. <laughs> and these lives are no pressure. I just get to chat away with you lovely people. Okay, so I am just going to chop this down with the die and um, the die cutter the paper trimmer so that's straight uh, we'll go this way I want to keep the straight line or maybe want to go a bit closer I do this when I want to do a double sentiment because I always end up looking through my dies for too long to try and find the right size die for what I need. Now, sometimes if it gets a bit small, like this has, and you don't want your fingers in the way, you can use memo tape and then you can use the grid to help you line up like the top of this should have probably changed my thing to hold it um, but that might be a bit close actually so I'm going to actually use just a little bit more and now I don't have the grid but I'm trying to use the line there there we go just to hold it to keep your fingers out of the way I really should have changed my blade I forgot to do that so I'm just gonna trim that down a bit and then that can sit up there look and you know me guys maybe we'll get out some enamel dots as well <laughs> because I just can't resist so let's stick that down I can just use some double-sided sticky tape for it Oh, Kelly, wow. Oh, I need to catch up. 425 subs and it's taken you three years. Wow. Yeah, I'm not, not expecting it to be a quick, a quick thing. I, even the followers I gained last weekend from the hop seems to have fluctuated since. I think I made it up to 54 and then I went back down to 40 something and it's all good though it's all good it was a learning curve right shall we see what enamel dots we've got I have loved how this has come out I will put it on a card base but after the after the live so we actually have got yellow in there and don't forget we've got our little um so for this for the first time you open the gate when you've put this on I will just use scissors to help guide it up and then we've got our snail so we could actually even put enamel dots behind there so we could use yellow I want to see what greens we've got though I think the darker greens might work a bit better so I've got the fright night here just because some of the colors are darker I've got fright night and I think I will put some yellow in. Where did I see the one that had already started? Maybe go for those two. Fright Night. I just realised I'm using the Fright Night enamel dots on a very summery themed card. <laughs> um, but this green works really well with the cardstock that we're using so this matches the green bean look i like it okay so we can go for um i actually think the yellow should go down here i'm actually going to put this big one just like here behind here and then we can go small one i don't know where that's about to sit it's about to sit there now I'm going to bring in a yellow one. So this is the wild flowers. At least we're a bit more on point here. I'm going to just put the yellow one there. So that when we open it up, we've got three there. And then 
um, we will put a big yellow one down here with a small green one very much like doubling up my thing so now we've got four on show and I'll just go for one more this medium yellow just gonna pop over here I really really love that guys let's just put those to the side I'll tidy up in a minute so we have the wood grain texture um, backdrop die in the background I think it just adds some extra interest there I know we've covered most of it up <clears throat> we've got the um, can't remember what they're called now these are the the new grass blade dies with the open the gate fence and the big bug hug stamp set so adorable I am going to leave it there I need a hot chocolate wow it's an hour and 45 minutes I did not realize <laughs> How long it had been thank you so much for joining me tonight and i'm sure i will catch you all soon bye everybody